I'm going to uh, do a, a bar of just basic Damascus. Uh, we're going to make a, a bar of the 250 layer Damascus steel, and this is just basic stuff. Uh, but if you've never done one, it might be helpful to you. What we're going to do, we're going to make enough steel in this bar here to make a nice long hunter knife, and we're going to do enough to make a, a Damascus steel tomahawk. And we're going to show you how uh, to lay this pattern out. I'm going to use four different types of steel. I'm going to use banding material. I'm going to use 15 and 20. I'm going to use 1075 and some saw blade material. Uh, these pieces need to be really clean. Now, when I say clean, rust has never bothered me on getting a forge weld. So I don't worry about the rust. But these bars here uh, of 1075 had a mill scale. Some people say that don't matter. But I, I like to take the mill, mill scale off, grind them clean. These are two bars, and they're thicker than the other steels. They're 1075, and I'll show you why and explain to you why they're uh, thicker here in just a minute. Okay, the trick to using different alloys in Damascus is to use alloys that have a high nickel content. The higher the nickel content, uh, the shinier the layer. The higher the carbon content, the darker the layers. So you, when we etch these blades, they will uh, etch shiny and dark, and you'll get, they will stand out. Uh, do we have that one Damascus? Hand me that here, and I'll show everybody this. This is a Damascus steel tomahawk that I just finished right here. Uh, I'll show you what this, you can see the dark layers and the shiny layers, okay? I'll show this to you here in a, at the end of the film, finished. But you can see the contrast in the layers. If we used just two alloys the same, we wouldn't have no contrast. It'd just be one color. And uh, you wouldn't even be able to see the well lines. So what, we're using uh, high carbon steel, high nickel alloy, and uh, banding, which has these blades here. The banding has high, high carbon. These have a higher nickel content. So we're going to mix them up. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start out with a, with a thick layer like this of high carbon steel. And the reason I'm using the thicker layer is when I, if we didn't add the thicker layer on the outside, when we heat these thin layers up, they would lose their welding heat before we could get them welded, and it would give us a bad weld uh, or a big old blister. So I found out by adding this thicker layer to the outside, it helps hold the heat in, and I get a better weld. Okay, here we go. We're going to start out with a thick piece of about 3 sixteenths. It's about 8 inches long and about an inch and a quarter wide. I'm going to put a piece of 15 and 20 next to it. And then I'm going to go ba uh, bandsaw blade. I'm going to go banding. I'm going to go bandsaw blade. banding like that and bandsaw blade about five and then I'm going back to 15 and 20 I'm going to go banding bandsaw blade and alternate it back and forth I've never had this finish on the banding to ever be a problem okay we're going to just alternate this we're building a layer counts what we're doing. And the higher we can build this layer content, the quicker the billet will weld up. Or the higher we'll get the layer content. Okay, we're gonna go.
go about five, and then we add that. This time we're going to go banding. Bandsaw blade. We're going to go to about 50 layers. I believe we got plenty of material here for a billet. This is probably, this is more than enough steel to make what we're going to make. So I'm going to push this all back out of the way, get us a clamp, and yeah, get the clamp, the hammer. Believe me, these methods that have changed a lot since I first started making Damascus. I've been making Damascus for a lot of years. And it used to, and I've learned a lot from a lot of other makers down through the years. I started out making Damascus steel in a coal forge. And that's a whole nother ball game. We're going to tighten them real tight. important to get them straight. Okay, we got it ready to weld up and we're going to weld it on the ends because uh, we're going to grind these sides. When we get this all welded into a solid block, we're going to grind these sides down while it's red hot. It's a lot easier to clean up while it's red hot than it is after it cools. We're going to weld here on the ends to hold it together. And uh, the reason we're welding on the ends is to keep the weld out of our bar. We're going to take a handle like this, which is an old wagon tire. A rod iron. Rod iron will last longer in that at high heat than any other steel I've found. Uh, so we're going to weld it to the end right here, and that'll give us a handle to hold on to this while we're in the forge. So we're going to weld across the ends, and then we're going to weld it and build it up here. That'll take a little while, but now here is what we're going to. This is what we're going to end, end up. After that is welded together, it'll be drawn out into a bar like this. Here's a bar that's already welded and ready to go. We're going to go to the board over here, and I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to be doing after it gets to this point, so you'll help you understand. Let me explain to you what we're going to be doing. We just put this bar here together. We alternated the layers and everything. We're using four different alloys of steel. We're using, you know, I explained to you what the alloys we're using. We're going to draw it out into that long bar form like that. And then we're going to cut it and grind it and cut it up. And then we're going to cut it in five pieces. And then we're going to restack it. And when we restack it, each like this and weld that together, that's going to give us 250 layers. And then we're going to draw the bar out into the shapes we want to use. We're going to have one 10 inch piece and a three and a half inch piece 
and we'll grind and clean it up and that will make her tomahawk and then we're going to have enough left to draw it out and make a, enough steel to make a long hunter and uh, that's where we're going from here but this is the best way to get a high layer content see if if we did this again drew that out and w and cut it in five pieces it'd be 250 each time so there'd be 500 a thousand uh, 1250 layers if we repeated that one more time which you'd lose the identity of the layers at 250 layers these layers are thinner than paper so that's plenty good enough to get a good pattern and get a good cutting edge so what we're going to do now we're going to weld cut uh, we're going to weld this together draw it out and cut it you'll see us after we do our first weld and get everything welded you'll see us grind this block of hot metal and get all the slag off of it and get it cleaned up but uh, we're ready now to, to weld our billet together and turn the forge up and get a good weld on our bar okay what we're going to do now we've got this welded up into a block you can see we've welded it on the ends we've attached it to a bar. We're going to put it in and we're going to start it at a heat and then we're going to borax it and then that'll help it go ahead and heat up evenly. So we're and then after that we're going to forge weld it into a solid bar of steel. Then we'll pull it out and we're going to grind and clean it up and then draw it on out to 20 inches and then at that time we'll grind and clean it up and restack it. So right now we're ready to put this in and do a forge weld and turn this into a solid block of steel. So here we go. I'll do a weld on it with a hammer first and then after I get it welded good with a hammer I'll put it bring it back in the forge and get another welding heat and then I'll go in under the hydraulic press and start forge welding it with a hydraulic press and shaping it the way I want it. That cold bar going in there that hot cold bar of steel has dropped the temperature in our forge about three to four hundred degrees so it's got to build back up to that temperature so it's going to take a few minutes to get the first heat Once the steel, once the steel reaches about 700 degrees, the borax will start melting and running down in between the layers. You can notice how the outside layers are hot. And we're going to let the borax run all over down in the metal. This is sometimes where borax with the moisture cooked out of it would be better, anhydrous borax. But this will work just fine if we keep a hold of our can. I think we just lost a handle. You can see it's starting to take a glassy look. We're going to get back in the forge. got a coat on it. It should heat up more evenly now. Our bar of steel is at welding heat right now. It's solid, it's bright yellow, it's over 24, 2300. It looks like a molten stick of hot butter. You can see the borax dancing on the edge. 
We're going to bring it out. We're going to hammer weld it. it out next time it's going to go under the hydraulic press and we're going to force it put about 50 ton of pressure on it and squeeze it into a, a narrower block but if there's any place in there that didn't get welded with a hammer the hydraulic press will forge it together there's more than enough steel on this bar to make a tomahawk and a knife We've got to make this weld and one more, and we've got our bar done. Our bar has reached welding heat again, and we're going to bring it out, and we're going to put it under the hydraulic press. get another heat on it. The quicker you can get back into the fire, the more time you save in the, having to go into the forge. Okay, that, uh, it's welded up good and tight and solid now. So now we're going to go ahead and do some shaping on it. I'm going to use the trip hammer. I'm going back under the hydraulic press one more time and then it's going to go under the trip hammer and I'm going to draw it out a little bit and then we're going to clean it, grind it hot and get all the, everything off the side, get the bar smoothed up and then we'll draw the bar out 20 inches and grind and clean it, cut it in five pieces and restack it and then when we weld at that time we're done. We've got 250 layers of Damascus steel. going to pull it out, our bar out, and we're going to go back to hydraulic press. Smooth. Get it narrowed down good. Now I'm going to hammer it. Okay. I'm going to draw it out just a little bit. One more heat, but it doesn't have to be a welding heat, and we're going to grind and clean it up. Okay, tighten it up, Mike. I got it. Go ahead and move over. You want to grind from the other side, I think. See where the sparks are going. You may come around. Yeah. There you go. What Mike's doing right now, he's evening these sides up and cleaning the slag off. I'm going to forge it on the side and narrow it down before I start drawing this bar out. And that saves us forging that slag into our bar. The cleaner you keep it, the better off you are.
Okay, let's spin it. I'll hold it. Let's get it started. Okay. I got her now, Mike. I believe her wells are good. That's probably going to be good enough, Mike. Yeah, we can, we can forge it from there. be just a little bit. It'll take it a little while to get back up to temperature. But what we did, we cleaned the sides of the bar. So when I turn that on the edge and go narrowing that bar down, we won't pound all that slag into it. And we'll clean the top of the bar up with a brush. <clears throat> but we evened it up now on the sides. If there was anything hanging over, it's now even. And that also helps prevent well shear also. A lot of times you stand a piece of metal on the edge after you've just welded it and you hammer it, you can cause weld shear, is what we call it. And then it's difficult to get it to weld back. But by grinding it and getting it even, it prevents a lot of weld shears. We're working an extra big bar of steel. Uh, if you want to try this in your forge, you, did, you don't have to use a bar half the size. You can start out with smaller amount of layers and uh, half that many, and uh, it's a lot easier to handle. At my age, I'm going to have to start handling smaller bars, but uh, you could just add one more weld and with half the layers and get back to where we're doing it with two welds. Here we go. We're going to now clean this bar. He's cleaning the scale off. Okay, I'm going to flip it over, clean that side. Okay, you don't want to pound this into your steel. Okay, now I'm going to draw it out a little bit with a hammer. welding heat again. We're going to draw it with a hydraulic press. We're going to go back in. We're going to bring it to welding heat, which will take them just a little while. And we're going to do a little more at welding heat. The reason I added a little borax to it, I noticed there's a place in the bar that was wanting to come apart, so we'll just add some more borax, come back to weld and heat, and put it back together. But, and then we'll draw the bar out. 
Our goal is to draw it out 20 inches from here to here, and that'll give us five equal pieces. We can cut it in five equal pieces, grind it, clean it up, restack it. And then when we weld it, we'll be ready to build our tomahawk and our knife. Okay, now we're going to bring it out and go back under the hydraulic press. We've got a good weld and heat on the bar. I'm going to squeeze it one more time on my end. Now I'm going to narrow the bar down. got a lot narrower bar and we're ready to start drawing it. I'm going to clean it up a little bit, knock that scale off. And straighten it up one more time. Start drawing on the back. handle. Clean it once. bar just a little bit, hopefully. Yeah, ain't as bad as I thought it was. I believe that'll work. Now I've narrowed the back of uh, closest to me. I've narrowed it down and lengthened it. Now I can work on the front end, and we should have 20 inches there, just a little bit. And then we'll grind it, and cool it, and uh, cut it, and we're ready to go again. Okay, I'm going to do some drawing here on it. I'm in the way there.
getting there. We've got about four more inches to go. Got about four more inches to draw it out and then we'll grind and clean it up and do our cutting. I'm going to bring this bar of steel out right now and we're going to brush and clean it up what we can. Hit her with a brush there Mike. We're going to get off what we can but we're not going to be able to get it all. Okay I'm going to flip it over. Okay we're going to go to the vise now. Get ready to tighten up on that mic. One more. Give her a good tighten right there. Okay, Mike's gonna grind it. Go ahead, Mike. What we're doing, we're knocking that scale off. If you can see real close, there's a, a that's gotta come off before we can stack it and re-weld it. If you try and weld it, that, put that together and weld it, your weld won't stick. If it did, you'd end up with a bad spot in the steel inside. I'm gonna bevel the edges a little bit dome them. They'll be domed just a little bit. That way, when they go together, if there's anything in there, it'll force it out the side. Let's see what we got. Okay, let's turn it over, Mike. You've got that pretty good there. We took our bar, we started out like this. We, we had our layers uh, laid out and everything, with our, and we welded this into a solid block. And then we drew it out to 20 inches long. And then we cut it in four pieces like this. Each one of these layers has got, or, here have 50 layers. So that will give us a 200 layer billet. We were going to do five, but we decided to go ahead and go five inches. And uh, so we're going to have a 200 layer billet. And each one of these layers in this billet are thinner than a sheet of paper. But the way we've laid it out, 
you'll be able to see a contrast between the high nickel layers and the high carbon steel layers that doesn't have the nickel in it. What we're going to do now, we're going back into the forge with this piece. We're going to forge weld it into a solid block. We're going to draw it out in, in the shape of the material we're going to make. We're going to make a, tether, a Damascus steel tomahawk and a long hunter knife out of this block of steel. So we're going to forge weld it up, get our welds good and tight, and then we're going to start working off the end of the bar. Uh, we're going to get a draw out a 10 inch and a three and a half inch piece to make a Damascus steel tomahawk. And then we'll have enough left to make another nice big long hunter knife. So we're going in the forge now and we're going to heat this up and borax it and start forge welding. It'll take about 10 or 15 minutes to get that big block of steel up to 2300 degrees. So uh, we'll be watching for it to come up. Our forge even cools down when changes colors in there when you put that big block of steel in there. One solid block of steel now. We've got her well made, but we're going to clean it. I'm going to go back in before I lose my heat. We've got welding heat. I'm going to work the bar down in the hydraulic press at welded heat till I get it shaped down just a little more. goes the scale off of that side. There's a scale coming off. I am going to re-borax it just in case there was any cracks come open because I stood it on edge and evened it up and we're not going to take no chances now of losing our bar. The quicker we get back in the fire, the less heat we lose, so the quicker our turnaround time will be. Now I'm going to start narrowing the bar down and drawing it out into the material we need to do the tomahawk. And then we'll do the knife next. But we're going to work on the drawing the, about a 10 inch piece, an inch and a half wide, about a quarter inch thick, 10 inches long. And that will be enough to make a beautiful Damascus steel tomahawk. Now I've got the width of the bar narrowed down, I can start drawing the bar out. 
I believe I can work it now. I'd rather grind it off. Got it straightened up now and then we'll go to the hydraulic press and even the thickness up all the way down through there. I may draw it a little more. It's, it's still a little thick for us to do what we want to do with it. I'm going to do a little shaping. I think I'll do a little shaping then the hydraulic press.
okay. Okay, we've got the material we need now to make that Damascus steel tomahawk. We got a three, we got 13 and a half inches or over. We're gonna cut the steel here and that'll give us more than enough to make the tomahawk. I'm gonna grind and clean one side at 10 and a half inches, but three and a half inches I'm gonna grind on both sides because it's gotta go in the center. And the three, I'll have to do a little more forging on that short piece, so I'll, I'll tell you about it as soon as I get it cut and ready to, to bring back over here to forge. What we're gonna do now, we have our bar of steel that we've just cut off uh, 13 inches off of that bar of steel. And that's, for, that's gonna be for the tomahawk, a Damascus steel tomahawk. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna finish drawing off a piece of steel to make a long hunter knife. And this is the shape of knife we're going to make. We're going to need 12 inches of steel, at least an inch and a half wide, probably a good quarter of an inch thick. And uh, when we get this drawed off, I'm going to grind and clean up both sides of that piece of steel. And then I'm going to show you how to put a real unique look on this blade. Hydraulic press sure makes it handy for squaring your bar back up. It takes a lot of blows with a hammer to do what I just did then with a hydraulic press.
need to go quite a bit thinner. I'm hoping I can get it back white in there. Be checking the length. Yeah, I got plenty. Cut it off and then I'll bring it back. Earlier today we started out with four different alloys and small parts and pieces just like this. We forge welded them into a bar, a solid bar. We drew that bar out 20 inches. We ground and cleaned it up. We cut it in four equal pieces and restacked it and we drew the bar back out and that made 200 layers. And we drew that bar back out and we got enough material out of that bar to make two of these knives, long hunter knives, and a Damascus steel tomahawk. So here is our steel that we're gonna forge into a Damascus steel hawk. We're, this is the center part this will heat up, bow around, we'll spot weld it, we'll forge weld it together, and then we'll clean it up and hammer it out and make a beautiful Damascus steel tomahawk. And then I'm going to show you something on one of these knives here. Like we said, often the frontiersmen were short on metal, and especially any metal that had any carbon in it. And they made uh, their tomahawks and their knives out of these files. Well, this is a piece of Damascus steel. What we're going to do with it, we're going to make a knife out of it, but we're going to make it look like a horseshoe rasp. What I'm going to do, I'm going to heat this piece of steel red hot. I'm going to put a cold horseshoe rasp on top of this, and I'm going to press that horseshoe rasp into this bar of steel, into both sides. And then we're going to take this steel and heat it non-magnetic, and we're going to bury it in, in some lime. And this steel has to be annealed before you can cut it or before you can harden it. So we'll show you that process when we get to it. but. Uh, this is where we're at right now. We're getting ready to do a forge weld, a Damascus steel tomahawk. come up to, it starts getting red, and then we're going to pull it out and put a coat of borax on it. We're just going to borax the inside cutting edge of this inside piece. We want to get the borax on it before the steel gets so hot it starts, starts oxidizing. This is going to be a lot harder to shape than one of these horseshoe rasps. They're thinner and they're easier to bend. This one's going to be a lot harder. <coughs> it should stick to it now. We're going to give it a coat of borax and we're going to lay it here to the side. I, I tapered the top of this, narrowed it down. We don't need the extra metal there. We need the extra metal down here on this end. I'm going to get a good coat of borax on this before it does anything and I'm going to try and do a bend on it. 
hold it, put it, grab it here. I'm gonna get another heat on this because it's got it's thick and it's got a gonna be harder to bend. I want to get a good tight fit. Actually, when we bend this around, this cutting edge on this tomahawk is going to have 400 layers on it. What we're doing, we're wrapping 200 layers around and they're going to meet. Actually, it'll have more than that. It'll have 600 layers because we're adding another 200 with a center piece. So actually, the cutting edge on this tomahawk is going to have 600 layers on it. We got a 200 layer bar that we're doubling around, 200 on each side, another 200 in the middle, and we're going to forge weld it together. So the edge of this tomahawk is going to have 600 layers of steel on it. I'm working it at a real high heat because it's really hard to forge. Okay, now I'm going to put the center piece in. We got a pretty good fit. Now it could be better. We'll use the hydraulic press to pull it tight. I'm still not happy with it. press, press it once more, and I'm going to spot weld that right back here. It won't show in the end, in the end results, but it'll help hold everything together because we're going to be beating on that eye driving the drift in and out, so I'm going to spot weld it. We just took a hot piece of steel and we're turning it into something useful and beautiful. But that piece of steel, cold, couldn't be formed into nothing. And you know, it reminds me of what God did with Moses. 
Moses was out in the desert for 40 years. He didn't realize it, but he was in training for what he, God knew that he was going to be doing. So, you know, if take our lives. If When you first become a Christian, sometimes you don't want to give up the habits and change to what God wants, but God can make you into something beautiful if you conform your life to what he wants you to do. Uh, and that's the way steel, it's worthless like coal like this. But go, sometimes God puts us through the fire to train us and form us into something he can create and make something beautiful out of your life. Uh, when I look at that hot metal in there, it reminds me of what it was a while ago, laying on the bench. It was just a bunch of loose pieces. And I want to have my life where God can use me. I want to stay prayed up and ready for whatever God may have for me. This will be the last weld we'll be. We're going to go under the hydraulic press, and then I'm going to shape this under the hammer. Curve the end. And shape the front. I'm going to get the drift and put back in it wherever I laid it. Got a drift here. Got a Damascus steel tomahawk. The smoother I can get it on the anvil, the less grinding. I believe we're in good shape. I'm going to knock it off, let it cool. While that's cooling, I'm going to uh, take the other piece of steel and I'm going to heat it red hot. This is going to be the long hunter knife. It's going to be heated red hot. I'm going to lay a cold horseshoe rasp on it. And I'm going to press it in the hydraulic press and press the imprints of this horseshoe rasp into this bar of Damascus. And it will give it a real unique pattern when it's done. I think you'll like it. So I'm going to put it in the, in the forge now and heat it red hot. Got it? Yeah. Now I'm going to turn it over and do it again on the other side. May get another heat. I may have enough. That press really pushes it. So if I can get it to line up. 
Yeah, it did. One more deal. I'm not doing it all the way back because that's where the handle's gonna be. That'll be more than enough to show out on the blade. Now I'm gonna take that piece of steel, make sure it's straight, I got a good pattern on one side, but not as much as I want on the other. So I'm gonna repeat that one side. Looks like a rafts now on the sides of the steel. And this is what we'll make our knife out of. This time I'm heating the steel up. I'm going to bring it out and I'm going to bury the steel in lime. And why I'm doing that as you forge it and everything, it builds up stress points and uh, it, it won't take and harden proper or it could crack or break or you couldn't even saw it. You might be sawing along or drilling and you'll hit one of these uh, stress points. It's going to realign the structure of the steel. So we, when we heat it till it's non-magnetic, we're going to bury it in lime let it cool down slow and that's called normalizing so we're going to normalize the steel now it's red hot we want to get it in there before it cools made our bar of steel and we forged it out into a long bar. After we got it forged into a long bar, we cut it in sections, the material off of the bar that we needed to use. And this creates stress points in the steel. So we need to heat the steel to 1500 degrees and then let it cool slow. And that's called normalizing the steel. That way you can saw it and drill it. One way to normalize the steel is to bury it in lime. I use electric oven, but not everyone has electric oven, so it, you can do that by putting it in lime and letting it cool over a period of 12, 14 hours. So we're gonna get that horseshoe rasp looking piece out that we did, and this is it. Okay, now we're going to lay the edge of this out, get it kind of pre-shaped, and we're going to grind it into a, a knife and put a handle on it and let you see it. We're going to go work on our tomahawk now. It's cooled down enough we can shape it and grind it and get it finished. Here's our Damascus steel tomahawk we just forged. It's cooled down now. So we're going to cut this excess off just past where the two layers lapped over. And any, any layers that overlap, we're going to grind them flush and even. That stops a lot when you go to hammer this to shape. It'll save a lot of uh, maybe well shears. I know I've had better luck grinding everything flush and then hammering my shape out. So we're going to chop saw it off and then we're going to grind it to shape. Okay, here we go. Need to go a little bit more.
here's the, here's where the truth comes out. If we had a bad weld on here, it would show up right now. And there's no, no bad weld. So we're gonna get a coarse belt. We're gonna grind the front of this even. We're gonna come down, groove it in, and taper it and round the point. And then we're gonna hammer all this out to shape. We're gonna let it cool and, well, we're gonna kneel it in the oven. And then we're gonna grind it to shape. And then we're gonna harden it and then temper it, and then put it in the acid, and it'll bring out all the beautiful layers in this. There's 600 layers in here, there's 200 back here. And we'll see the, we can, we'll see the pretty beautiful steel when we're done. Okay, we're ready to pre-shape this. We've got a 36 grit belt on. We're gonna take our time. We're going to even these edges up. The shape doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same because we're gonna create our own shape by the way we pound on it. What we're interested in is getting all the edges even. We're pretty well there on the front side. I'm gonna cool it. These Burke King grinders is a, really a sweet piece of equipment. I'd say that anyway, we're a dealer, but I do like them. Now we're going to shape the inside. Seeing a lot of sparks come off of this, we're almost done to where we're going to do some more forging on it. And then we're going to hammer it as smooth as we can and hammer it to shape. We're running a 36 grit belt. You want to make sure the belt covers your wheel all the way, even if you run and start wrapping around the side, then adjust your belt over to hang over, but don't grind over there. Because those wheels are rather expensive, so you want to keep them covered with their belt. When you've got several of these grinders running in the shop at one time, quietness is a plus. And they are quiet and smooth. Okay, we about got her shape. Now we don't want that hook shape on the front, but we're gonna pound that to shape. We could grind a little more of it off because we got plenty of material.
the main thing is to get all the overlapping metal evened up because if you don't, you're asking for trouble. Now when we go back in the forge, we're not going to want to go as hot to a welding heat. We'll take our hottest heat first, and then if we have to go back, we'll go at a lower heat. The closer you get to hammering the edge out, the cooler you want to do it. You don't want to do it totally cold, but you want to do it cooler. We've, we've got a lot of metal in this one. That way we can grind curve the curve the metal more and show more of the layers of Damascus. And we're almost there. This steel is still not been annealed and it's still real hard. You couldn't saw this steel or drill it on a bet right now. We're going to hammer it to shape and then we're going to put it in and anneal it. We're going to, or n they call it normalizing. Okay, we're ready to put it in and hammer it to shape. Here's what we got. We're going to increase that edge to four inches, hammer this smoother, and take some of the, length. we're going to lengthen it out we're going to hammer out a wider edge and uh, shape it. We're now ready to start forging this to the to shape. I'm going to use a little water on this anvil. What that'll do, it'll keep cut down on the slag sticking to the head. By working in that See how the slag didn't to keep our anvil as clean as we can keep it right now. And do with less hammer blows. We want to hold the hammer blows down and keep them as smooth as you can keep them. It'll save you a lot of grinding in the end. We're still working it down. Drawing the tail out. Okay, we're getting close. We're still pretty thick up here. One more time and we should have it. Each time we try and work at a lower heat to pack the steel tighter. If you get it too hot, you get grain growth and uh, you lose the shape of what you're after. I'm going to smooth it out. We want this one pretty smooth because it's got to be ground and polished. 
I've got one more hammer mark in there I'd like to get out. We want a pretty hot heat this time. Not necessarily, well, we'll get that one spot out, that one hammer mark. And then we're going to get a good heat and we're going to stamp it. That's hot enough to get this hammer mark out. Okay, we're not too bad off. it out a little. We've got our edge down to about the thickness of a nickel. Maybe a little thicker right in the center. I'm going to get one more heat and we're ready to stamp her name in it. It's good and straight. Everything's where we want it. We're going to stamp it Ozark Forge and McGinnis underneath it. Stamp it, and then we're going to bring it to 1500. I'm putting Ozark Forge right there. And it's right below it. Get it to a good critical heat on it. I'm sure there's some stress points in this steel, so we're going to heat it up and bury it in the lime and let her cool down. And we'll show you, we're going to pour a pure butt cap on a handle and we'll show you how to do that while her steel is cooling down. This is what we got. We're going to bury it right in here. So we're going to go over here and uh, we're going to lay out the handle and we're going to pour a pewter handle, a butt cap on this handle, a decorative uh, pewter butt cap. I'll show you an example here. What I'm, what I'm doing here uh, I'm laying out a handle. This is one that's not quite finished yet. This is a pipe hawk that I've put a pewter butt cap on. And it's also got a pewter nose cap. And uh, these little dots are even part of the front. They run through and holes here and they come out. But uh, I'm going to show you how to work with pewter here in a minute. But a lot of it's layout, how you lay it out and then cut it and prepare it. And uh, I'll show you, I'm no expert on this. I'll, I just want to tell you right now how I, I, do, I just show you my way how I do it. I don't claim to be an expert, but it works for me. If it works for you, we'll, great, we'll both be happy. So <laughs> here we go. I'm laying out a circle here on the end of this piece. And what I'll do in a minute, I'll take a Dremel tool and I'll cut a circle right here. And I'm going to put another circle up here, right here. But I won't cut this circle, and I'll show you why here in just a second. I, this circle is to lay out where we're going to do. Uh, we're going to cut this out and remove this wood, and I'm going to cut a channel in on this side. And I'm going to go on this side and try and get about the same on both sides. And it's both are pretty low. I'm not good at measuring. I'm better at guessing. And if I take a look at them, they're not very far off. I'm going to move this line up just a little bit and move this one up just a dab. Now, Right here, we're going to drill a hole, 
I'm going to mark an X right here. That's where we're going to drill. And hopefully our drill will come out on the other side. If not, we may have to move our line a little bit. But I'm going to show you how we do that. And then we're going to pour a pewter butt on this with the pewter. So we're going to go over to where the Dremble tool is. And I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to drill it. And we're going to wrap it and pour it. So we're going to drill a small hole first. And then we'll drill a larger one. Hey, how can you guess closer than this? Right at the end of our channel. Pretty good guess. Now what we got to do, we've got to make a larger hole. That pewter will run all the way through the handle right there. But we're going to try and hopefully make a larger one without it grabbing and tearing our handle up. Got to be real careful not to let it grab. Let's hope it don't or we'll be getting another handle. We don't want to go all the way through. Now this, remember, that'll be flushed off. We'll have a round circle here, and this is the channel the metal will run in. We're going to cut a groove here and remove that wood. But we got to be real careful. Now, let me show you here. The metal will go all the way through, but we'll be able to surface this off. We may change this just a little bit because this did go high here. But we'll readjust this. We're going to use a Dremble tool, cut around, and then we're going to grind the end of this down and get it ready to pour. I found this to be a useful tool right here. It's like a little saw blade that fits in this Dremble tool, and I can use it to lay lines out. Right here, I'm going to cut a line right around this handle like this. And I'll go about, oh, not quite a quarter of an inch deep around it like this. And then I'll also come up like this right here. Right here, I'll come up on both of them. And then we'll remove the wood out of there and we'll about be ready to pour. So I'm going to turn it on and remove the wood. I'm resting my hand and holding the angle straight and rotating the wood. You don't want to cut it in two, but just come right on around it like this. Now we got a good depth of a little over a quarter of an inch. Now we're going to move in and we're going to cut our channel, try and center it. Okay, now we'll do this side the same. And that's how we do it. I'm going to turn this off. Now that's the stop, and this is the channel that'll be going through. So that makes it easy to take chisels. I will use a Dremble tool to take that out, because I can take a Dremble tool and just take the center out. And you got to be careful prying this over. You don't want to bevel this edge, because if you do, your pewter will follow it and you won't have a good, clean, crisp edge. But we're going to go back to the grinder. I may go a little deeper right here. I believe I am. I'm going to go a little deeper with that one. I think everything else is OK, but I am going to go a little deeper right there. A lot of this pewter gets removed when in shaping the handle. 
So you don't want to have wood showing here. So you need to go deep enough that you don't get into it. And I think we're going to be pretty good shape now. I believe we got it. Okay. I'm going to go back to the grinder now, and I'm going to grind this off up close to that edge. I'm not going to get on it. And then I'll take a Dremble tool and take this out, and then we're going to pour this. Here's where variable speed comes in real handy on a grinder. I can turn that speed way down like that, and I can get in here, and I don't have to worry about losing control of my work. cutting a little bit. If you want to go a little faster, you can turn it up. I'm not going to get right up to the edge, but I am going to taper this. And we'll go back and remove the excess wood here in a minute. I tapered that right here so when we flush this all off, so we don't grind and get into it. We're just about done. I'm just gonna go a little deeper here. I'm gonna go as deep as my cut mark. You can do any kind of shape you wanna do. Some people, before they do their pour, preheat their wood and everything. That's ready to be cleaned up now and we'll cut our channel and smooth everything up. And we'll finish over there with a Dremble tool and then we'll pour it. Okay, what I'm, I just put in here is a, it's a big dental burr. And I found that to be real handy for removing wood. Uh, rest your hands on, the, on something solid and just so it don't jump around on you and come in here, I'm resting my hand. I can come right in here and just remove that wood. Be careful not to bump the past or cut mark because if you do, it will show up in the end result. See, so we can just come in here, remove that wood. The, the pointed ones are harder to do, but I do them about the same way. I use, laying them out takes a while, but I use that same tool that I cut this line with to do the pointed star like you saw in the one, the pipe tomahawk. Okay, we've got this pretty well down. See, we've got plenty of clearance here now for our metal. We know we're going to have that much thickness to work with, but we don't want a high spot out here either. This pewter is pretty amazing stuff. It's beautiful. You can even put knife guards on with it. And a lot of the old time knives were done that way. Now we're going to do the channel and I'm going to work in the center. I'm resting my hand solid so I can, won't let it jump off. I'm cutting it away and I can just barely go up to that edge and you'll see it start disappearing. It doesn't matter if it's undercut a little bit anyway. That helps the pewter stay in in place. Now I'm going to pop that out with my fingers. See? It comes right out. Now we've got a clear channel to pour. All we need to do is smooth it up. And we're going to smooth that up with a file here in a minute. Now we're going to do the same on this side. Sure and rest your hand solid or this thing can 
jump out of your hand and then you'll be real sorry. Now I've got a channel cut. I need to cut over just a little bit more. There it came. Now we've got a, a deep channel for our metal to run through to go to the front. Okay, now I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to take a file. I'm going to take a file right here. I have one that has a flat edge if I can happen to be lucky enough to find it right here. This one here has no, will not cut on the edge. So I'm pretty straight around there, so I don't want this file cutting. So I flatten one side where I can just smooth this down and get a good pour. The smoother the metal runs through here, the less turbulence and the better your pour is going to be. pretty smooth. Now I'm going to do something to ensure that this doesn't come off. After I got it smooth, I'm going to put a three or four round holes down in here. This gives that pewter some place to hang on to the wood, just like that. That way the pewter won't, can't slip. We're ready to go over now and wrap it, and we're going to set it up and pour it. This is stainless steel foil. That's what I've used to wrap this. We've got to wrap a tight wrap on this, and it's got to be tight, because if you pour that hot metal in here and you don't have a tight fit, it's going to run right out the bottom. I've heard of people using cardboard and everything, but this is all I've ever used. Tin foil might work, but you want it smooth and you want it tight. So we're going to try and wrap this around and get it tight. We want it to stick up a little bit past the end because we're going to pour metal all the way up to the end. Now I'm pulling it down real tight and I'm going to take masking tape and I'm going to pull it as tight as I can down below and then we'll wrap up. We don't want no metal going out the bottom. I believe we've got it. We want to make sure we're even, everything's even on the inside. We did it right. And I may just put another wrap down here. This metal is going to cool down pretty quick, and it, I, I can't tell you, I know for sure the melting point on this metal. Uh, I know you can get burnt real bad with it if you're not careful. Okay, we should be okay on this. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take it over here, I'm going to set it in this vise right here and the vise is going to hold it. I'm not going to tighten it to tight it dents the handle but I'm going to get it fairly tight. And this is something that I'm going to use if the metal is too hot it bubbles up and as it cools I can pack it back down. But I hope I don't have to do a whole lot of that. Okay now uh, there, uh, I'm gonna, there'll be a place where you can buy pewter or you can go online. There's several different types of pewter. If you get the food grade pewter, it can be rather expensive. Uh, it varies with the market, metal market. But it can run as much as $15 a pound, uh, as cheap as maybe 6 or $7 a pound. That, uh, this is food grade pewter because we pour actually pour smoking ends on tomahawks and the food grade pewter is prettier, it's shinier. 
uh, I think it has a high tin content. I don't know for sure. So I'm not claiming to be no expert at this. I'm just trying to show you how I do it and, and take what you can learn from it and use it for, your, for yourself. So I'm going to heat this with a, a rosebud and I'm going to add a little metal to it and then I'm going to test it with a wooden stick until I get the right temperature. Once we get it to temperature, you can just turn the heat off and forget it. Just watch it. Okay, here we go. Just a, it's just a steel ladle. Molten lead or, or pewter or any molten metal, if you get water in it, you can have an explosion. So you need to be careful about having sweat drip in it or any kind of moisture even. Okay. Now, if this had condensation on it and I did this, you could get an explosion. So make sure there's no condensation on there. I'm running more pewter in that pan. We're going to make sure we got enough to do the pour. And we got more than enough. Now I'll turn it off and lay it over here for now. Now I'm going to take a spoon, and this is real important. Clean, skim the top of this. Now I'll put it here. And I can tell a lot about what, see, look at that stick. See it burn? So you know you're too hot right now. So we'll wait a little bit. I think we can probably pour. Still pretty warm. But see, it's not burning the stick. Okay, we're going to pour. I'm going to clean it one more time, and we're going to pour. I've poured it a little bit cold, colder than this. Test it one more time. It's going to bubble up a little bit, but I think it'll pour better right now. So we're going to pour it. And I'll be watching it. Here we go. To make sure I don't have any air bubbles or anything in it, I'm going to start packing it down. It's still molten underneath and cooling on top. So as you pack it down, sometimes it bubbles up. Just let it cool. Clean your... I just polished the head of a, a bolt to cool it down. Okay, it's starting to cool a little more. It's still bubbling, though. If I'd have poured it a little cooler, it would have been better, but this is going to work. We're going to make sure. It's starting to pack now. It's quit bubbling. Add the a pewter work on the end of a hawk or on the head adds a lot of class to the tomahawk. I'm going to take, uh, get a little hammer here. I'm going to just pack it just a little bit. Still hot. We can probably pull some of this off now. Let it cool just a little bit more. If there's a little flash over, that's to be expected. 
uh, it will grind off. But we don't want a whole gob. Okay. The moment of truth. We got a little flash over on this side. This side just fine. But that we we've got this will be okay. If you look real close, this is what you can expect. Now, this side's got a little flash over, but that won't matter. That comes from the wood not being level. Uh, the wood had a concave, but this will grind off and match this side here. So we'll grind it off, and you'll see the end result when we get the head fitted up to the tomahawk. Here's where we started with our project. We started out with these pieces like this, Four different alloys of steel we started with. We uh, lay, laid them out in different layers and, and then we took the bar. We forge welded the bar together. We welded it on the ends, although this one's welded on the sides. This here, after it was forge welded together, then became a big solid bar of steel. This bar then was ground and cleaned up and cut into five equal pieces. And then, after we ground it and cleaned it up, we restacked these pieces and forge welded it ag together again and then drew it out into the material that we were going to use to make our hawks and knife. This one bar made a tomahawk, a knife, and there's still enough left for a patch knife and another large knife. Here's what's left of that material. This is what's left of the, the original bar right here. It needs to be annealed and then we can saw it and use it. But this is a bar of Damascus steel right here. Then, after we did that, we showed you and this is the end results. This is the tomahawk. We showed you how to pour the pewter, how to do the leather work, and this is the tomahawk. It has a piece of quilted maple for a handle and a pewter, a pewter butt cap and has some decorated pieces on it. Okay? That piece was made from that bar, and here's the horseshoe rasp that was made. It's not a horseshoe rasp, it's a bar of Damascus steel that we put in the hydraulic press and pressed into this bar to make it look like a horseshoe rasp and finished out. Makes a unique looking knife. We put the cross marks in here with a a file called a checkering file to give it a look like it was the back of a file. And you can see the horseshoe rasp where we pressed it into the steel. The equipment and the power tools you see in this shop, I didn't start out with that, many, that much equipment. I started out with a hand drill, hacksaw, file, and that's how I started out. I made a knife and sell it and buy a little bit of equipment. I promised God one time if he'd give me the talent to use my hands that I would try and bless his people with my talent. And God's been good to me and he's brought good people in my life. I'm thankful that uh, God had a son and loved us enough to give his son for our, for our sins. And uh, I'm a Christian and I love serving God. I love having Christian men come and do this class. 